And that's Jason J. Campbell, and I want to thank you for watching my videos. In this video, I'm going to conclude uh, the section of the analysis uh, into qualitative research on phenomenological research. Um, I did um, a video series on narrative research. I did the first half of the um, discussion of phenomenological research, and in this series, I'm going to continue uh, or conclude rather the discussion on phenomenological uh, research as a method of qualitative research. Again, the notes that I'll be using are available to you. Just click the banner that will pop up on the video. It'll take you to the PDF, or you can click the link in the description box. That'll take you to the PDF as well. Um, feel free to print it out and follow along with the notes. Again, um, this is going to be an account of uh, phenomenological research. Also, as I said before, um, the accounts that I'm going to be giving uh, in the video in this series is an introductory account. It is used to introduce the ideas, to supplement lectures, to supplement discussion. Um, so, uh, with that being said, let's begin uh, section 2.2, and this is an introduction. Qualitative research. Alright, so this is an introduction to, it should be methods, but it doesn't matter. Introduction to the methods of qualitative research. And in the notes, this is section, section 2.2. Alright, 2.2 in the notes. Um, the first thing that I want to discuss, uh, and the majority of the discussion, I think the majority of the discussion actually, yeah, the majority of this discussion, um, the totality of the discussion, is going to be uh, a description of the eight procedural steps for conducting phenomenological research. Um, the majority of the steps I got out of uh, John Creswell's second edition of Qualitative Inquiry and Research Design, um, Choosing Among Five Approaches. This is the, the Sage Publication Edition. Uh, not even Sage Publication Edition, I'm assuming Sage is the only person that publishes it. But... Um, I find of all the, and there are many, many different authors who have written on qualitative research, qualitative research design, the modes of qualitative research. Creswell is the most, for me, is the most uh, accessible um, to an introductory account of how these functions. Um, as I said, this is going to be a very, very general account, and I want to address the eight procedural steps. So here we go. Uh, eight procedural... procedural steps for conducting phenomenological research. The first step in the account is the identification of, quote, a common or shared experience of a phenomenon. If you've been, if you're at this video now, um, and you're not just watching this video for the first time, but you've gone through and watched all the subsequent videos, you know that one of the hallmark uh, means of identifying phenomenological research is that phenomenological research is an attempt to interpret, in some instances, the lived experience of individuals having experienced some particular phenomena. So an individual experience, experiences a phenomena, that individual gives you a, a descriptive account of that experience, and then we interpret that account where appropriate. Um, so it is an identification of common or shared experiences of a phenomenon. The next thing is, uh, and this is important, this is something that's new to the discussion, is that there is a desire to have a better understanding of the phenomena. We, the researchers, have a desire to have a better understanding of what that thing is, right? A desire to have a better understanding of the phenomena more than a narrative account of uh, one's experience. So, in order to make sense of this, again, I just want to do uh, a, comparative and, uh, a comparison and contrast. If we're talking about a narrative experience, versus a phenomenological experience. Um, this is sort of what it would look like. A narrative account, we have the experience, whatever the experience is, and in a phenomenological account, we have the experience, whatever the experience is. In a narrative account, we have the participants, in a phenomenological account, we have the participant. Same account, right? So, here we are, this is a participant, this is a participant, here we are as the researcher, 
researcher, not the researcher on this side, who is a researcher. So a participant, the experience, and the researcher. The researcher in a narrative account, right, is interested in the actual story, right? There is some phenomena that occurred, but what the researcher in a narrative account is interested in is how the individual or how the community of individuals tells the story of dot 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 dot. How is the story of your experience migrating? Um, how was that experience? So the researcher's interest in a narrative account is focused on the story, right? You understand? You understand? Right? Understanding the story, for the most part, which is not to deny, neither of these are uh, exhaustive or mutually exclusive, but the emphasis of narrative research is to tap into the narrative, right? We want to know what the story, tell me the story, I want to hear the story. How did you come about the story? How did you hear the story? Do you communicate the story? How do you communicate the story? So on. In phenomenological research, as we just said, there's a desire to have a better understanding of the phenomena itself, right? So the researcher is interested in understanding right? in narrative account the researcher is interested in understanding the story or the dimensions of the story in a phenomenological account the researcher's focus is shifted which is not to say that the story is impor isn't important um, but the researcher's focus is shifted to understanding the phenomena the person's telling of the story is a conduit to attaining a better understanding of the phenomena. So the individual tells the researcher the story, and in telling the researcher the story, the, sto the researcher has a better understanding of the phenomena. The individual experienced the story, right? The individual experienced the story, and for the, the individual in uh, the researcher, um, uh, using narrative theory as a mode of, of qualitative research, um, the experience is important, right? Whatever that phenomena is important, but more importantly is how the individual communicates the idea of that story, right? So it's, it's only tendentially important, right? It's only tangentially important. Really, the emphasis is placed on the narrative. So you can see the distinction, right? There is an influence, obviously it's, a, it's sort of a tertiary influence, Right. So, obviously the individual has a um, relationship, the participant has a relationship to, this, to the phenomena, but really what the researcher is doing is not trying to better understand the phenomena, but trying to understand how and why the individual tells the narrative in the way that they tell the narrative. So I'll give you an example, and I've done this already, but just, you can imagine, two, two young kids, both from uh, impoverished communities, one person tells, so the impoverished community would be the phenomenon, right? In a phenomenological research, my interest would be on the impoverished community. In narrative research, my interest wouldn't be on the impoverished community. It would be the stories that are told about impoverished communities. What would that look like? I asked participant one, um, tell me a story about your experience uh, uh, growing, growing up poor. And the person tells the story of recognizing that poverty was something that he or she could fight against and they went to school and they got and they got this education and they used that education to build them out of poverty and bring them out of poverty and and now they are no longer in that situation which is contrasted against someone who tells the narrative someone who tells the story of um, you know I was my mom was poor my dad was poor um, I recognized as a young kid that there wasn't much for me to have there wasn't, there wasn't much that I was going to get, and I just made do, I made best with what I had. Two totally different stories, right? Two completely different stories. And then we can start to ask, why is there a difference? Why might there be a difference in one story or the, or the other? Um, are we going to make value judgments on the stories? And so on, right? You can see two totally different types of research. Same context, roughly, right? In a phenomenological research, what I would do is I want to understand poverty more. So yeah, I have two different stories, but the fact that I have two different stories just lets me know how, how much more complex this concept of poverty is. It's the poverty that I'm looking at in phenomenological research 
it's the the story of poverty that I'm looking at that I'm interested in in narrative research, right? So they're very very similar. It's a it's a hairline distinction, but that hairline distinction makes all the difference, right? It makes all the difference.